morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Encouragement Kingdom Outreach. I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. Much warmer than it was. And I thank for thankful for all those who joined us online last week. It was a good message, and we just continue to obey the Lord in spite of the weather. Amen. 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 I am so glad that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. He has not changed. He will not change. And I'm so glad that his actions created an eternal place for us in glory. So no matter what goes on in our country or in our world, we are secure. We have made that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got a place in heaven. So our, our citizenry, right, the, the place where we belong to is heaven. It's beyond what we can see here. Amen? And that makes me feel so good because things feel like they're going in places where I don't want them to go in our world and our society already at the beginning of the year. And so one of the things that um, there's many that are selling to Dr. Martin Luther King and his actions and his commitment to continue to fight for those who need needed an advocate for the poor people, black people, those people who do not have a voice. He fought for, and he had a team of people he worked with. He was led, and he led others in this journey. So one of the things, and I'll get to the scripture so that you'll know that as a man of God and a preacher, we preach from the word, and we live by that too. Uh, one of the things I did last year was start to read Why We Can't Wait, which is a book that he wrote, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote, uh, in the 60s. And in these books and in his letters to churches, he laid out the strategy. The strategy to love those who are in need. The strategy is to continue to overcome. And I'll read a little passage in just a little bit of that. But I'm reading from Hebrews 13, verses 7 through 15. It says, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, mm -hmm. not by ceremonial foods, which are of no value to those who eat them. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the tent. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people whole through his own blood, not the blood of animals. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we have we are looking for the city that is to come. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, that confess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. That's why we're here today, to remind ourselves of each other, encourage one another in the way of the Lord, to do what he would have us to do, to follow those who are, who are leading us, follow their faith. And I'm so thankful for the book, the Bible, that shows us that. So as I was looking at this, um, this book and kind of looking at some of the passages of the, the many ministers that came together to encourage one another in their civil rights efforts, they had a pledge for people who were wanting to be involved in the journey of making a difference in our country. And not everyone was able to do sit on the demonstration lines. There were places for people to work when they were, were not up to the cost to be able to give all of that. 
And that was a reminder to me that we all have a role that we play. Yeah, we do. And it may not be on the front lines like our pastor, but we have a role that we can play for one another. We can help. We can be there. We can mentor families and mothers and children along the way to know and to seek their place in the world, which is living a life for Christ. He doesn't change. He's always the same. And I thank, thank God for that. But the commitment card went, went like this. I'm going to just read a couple of these so that you can um, sense the loyalty, not only to the cause, but more importantly to Jesus Christ our Lord. It says, I therefore pledge myself, my person and my body, to the nonviolent movement. Therefore, I will keep the following Ten Commandments. Meditate daily on the teachings and life of Jesus. Number two, remember always that the nonviolent move, movement in Birmingham seeks justice and reconciliation, not victory. Number three, walk and talk in a manner of love, for God is love. Number four, pray daily to be used by God in order that all men are happy. Number five, sacrifice personal wishes in order that all men might be pleased. Six, observe with both friend and foe the ordinary rules of courtesy. Seven, seek to perform regular services for others and for the world. Eight, refrain from the violence of fist, tongue, or heart. Number nine, strive to be in good spiritual and bodily health. And number 10, follow the directions of the movement and the captain of the organization. To me, that brought tears to my eyes because it spoke to a commitment to Jesus Christ and knowing that he was the strength that they needed and we need today in our fight for justice, in our actions that we carry out. Looks like it's going to be an interesting uh, election season. Uh -huh. These are some commandments that we can follow. Some words to think about. Not God's commands, but words that we can follow as we reach out and pray for our local government, our state government, our national government, and our world leaders as well. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Keep that in your hearts today, I pray. As we move on to our prayer list today, that's exactly what we're praying for, world peace. There's wars and rumor of wars everywhere, and it's starting to heat up, as I say, hot spots. In the Middle East. And the war's not over for Ukraine, Israel, South Africa, the Palestinians, and I'm sure there's many wars that we have yet to talk about. War, poverty, violence, drug abuse here in our country as well. Homelessness, joblessness, uh, hopelessness. Lord, we need you. We need you today. So join me as we enter into prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we can come into this place of worship, Lord, freely, Lord, to lift up your name, Lord, thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank Lord. You, Lord. It is a freedom that we have, and we understand that our source of power and strength is only in you, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who are in the faith and continue to follow the faith walk and past pastors in my life um, that their, their strength and their character was built on you and you only, Father God. And I just thank you for that, Lord. And I ask that we would just be that church that would also be that, Lord, and other churches here in the city, Lord, whether it's Christ Temple, Penn Chapel, No Greater Love, Mount Zion, First Baptist, Lord, you know all of them, Lord. All of those churches, Lord Jesus, that we are about you, Lord, your love that we spread, Lord. Help us not to be deceived, Father God. There's lots of deception going on, Lord. And Lord, most importantly, Lord, we need to have our eyes focused on you. That is my prayer for myself, Lord, and I pray for others, Lord, because I can get out of sorts, Lord Jesus, and, and forget that you are truly in control of this situation, Lord. You have not left us, and you will not forsake us, Lord. I, that we would keep our eyes lifted up on a mighty God that holds the whole world in his hands. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that you have your church family and 
that we are heavenward, Lord Jesus, but we need to be about your business today, Lord. And we thank you for the word that will come forth. We thank you for the worship that will come forth. We pray for every family, Lord Jesus, in every situation, Lord, that people are walking through, Lord, whether hospice care or, or taking a loved one to the hospital, Lord, you know, Lord, homelessness, Lord, people need new jobs, Lord Jesus, they need shelter and protection, Lord. Lord, we just need a touch from you, Lord. Help us to remember the healing that can come from you in our bodies, Lord Jesus, in our homes, in our family relationships, Lord. There's several that, that have contracted COVID, Lord, that's not gone away, Lord. So, Lord, touch those who are going through uh, the illness, Lord Jesus, and the flu, and everything that's out there, Lord, even for those things that the doctors don't even know about, Lord, you know, Lord. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for traveling mercies, Lord, this week, Lord, and carrying us through this cold spell, Lord. I pray for those who did not have enough to eat, Lord, and, and bills are due, Lord, and, and the money is short, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you would just be able to use us and encourage your kingdom outreach to touch, Lord Jesus, to serve, Lord Jesus, to meet the needs and be your hands and your feet in the name of Jesus, Lord. We love you. We love you, Jesus. And Lord, we implore you in Jesus' name, Lord. We pray that the message will come forth with your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
each and every day. I thank you for his traveling mercies over these last couple of days, back and forth to Missouri. I just thank God that uh, he gave you a safe passage. And it, it gives you pause. Because there's no guarantee that when you leave someplace, you'll get where you're going and that you'll get back to where you're coming from. There's this hand of mercy and grace that allowed it to happen that way. Now, that doesn't mean that there weren't some folks who didn't get where they were going. But I'm glad to testify today that he's a protector, he's a deliverer, and I need him more. How about you? Praise you, Jesus. I need you more. You can sing it more. More than yesterday.
Lord, there's a lot of things we think we need. There's a lot of things that we seek for. Lord, whether it brings us happiness or joy or contentment of one kind or another. But I'm convinced this morning that more of you is always the best thing. I'm convinced this morning that there's not a life like you. Nothing like you, Lord. And so I pray today, Lord, for all the things that we're seeking for, for all the things that are on our, our plate and on our agenda that we think is going to get it done for us. I'm here to say more of the Lord. More of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Help us today, Lord. Help us today, Lord, to know that it's you. You fill that empty space. You quench that thirst. You provide, oh God, where we just what we need. Help us to hunger and to thirst after your righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you today for each one that wanted to sound my voice, whether here in our sanctuary or online, and those who will hear me. Oh God, we need your touch. We need a, a visitation. And beyond the voice of a mere man, I pray that the spirit of God would quicken us, would be alive in this place. Oh God, would go from heart to heart and from breast to breast. You know what we stand in the need of, oh God. And so we lay it at your feet this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we lay down our anxieties and our stresses. We lay down the challenges. Oh God, our uncertainty. Even when we might be a bit fearful, yes. oh God, we lay it out in your feet. Knowing that, oh God, you'll pick it up and you'll take it with you. Oh God, and you'll, you'll heal, you'll deliver, you'll answer, you'll respond in our best interest. And so we thank you for today. Now touch your servant today, Lord, as he comes with the word. Thank you for the opportunity to prepare and to provide. Touch each one who will hear, oh God, that we might only, not only hear, but apply that which they hear. That we might not be just hearers of the word, but doers also. We thank you, and we praise you, and we love you in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may see it. Praise you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Thank you, Susan, for those selections this morning. Please fed our spirit. And there's more to come, so we're just thankful. Thank you for each one of you coming out in this chilly environ called Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, left St. Louis yesterday, uh, and the, the, the weather, the, the, my St. Louis friends who are watching today uh, and across this country, uh, they are going to get a cold spell as we get a heat wave. So I got out of there just in the nick of time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And of course, uh, this, this warm spell, this, this uh, Miami, Florida weather we're going to be getting over the next couple of days. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So I'll tell you what, in the 20s, I'm excited about 23 degrees. Everybody ever been today excited about 23 degrees? I'm excited about 23 degrees. My Lord. And if it gets to 24, 25, 26, I don't know, I ain't even sick of it. I ain't even sick of it. Praise God. Glad to be with you. Once again, uh, just a quick announcement. Um, I have been working on a ministry plan uh, outline that I want to share with you. I'm going to be looking to send it to your email. I want you to look it over next Sunday after service. We're going to have a brief opportunity to just walk through it um, and uh, get some feedback as to what your thoughts are, uh, what your thoughts are about how realistic it is for us um, and, uh, and so forth. And then what, what, what role each person can play uh, in the execution. One thing to have a plan is another another thing to execute it. And so we're going to try to put our plan together uh, for 2024 and, and beyond, if, it, if indeed as the Lord wills, and uh, see where we go from there. Uh, we are in a, a, a transition year. I remember when we started, you know, I said, Lord, but how long do you want me to go with this thing? He said, well, give me three years and then we'll see where we go from there. So I said, okay, we're coming up on three years. So now we have a place where we got to think about which way do we go? Um, what do we do? We keep 
going, uh, what do we do? And so a lot of that will be dependent on you. So not just on me, on you. So be ready for that. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know the three are not there in so there's somebody out there. Uh, we are in uh, Luke chapter 7 this morning. So go there with me, Luke chapter 7. If you have a Bible in the pew there, go open it up. Because I want you to see what the pastor is saying. Okay, you can believe it if you want, but it's, it's so much better to see it for yourself and be able to discern. And be Shirley said you got to be mindful about deception. And you're right about that in these days because the one way you know what's false is to know what's true, and you, the one way the one way you know what's a counterfeit is to know what the real thing looks like. So that way you're able to discern indeed what is going on. And whenever you hear someone not um, fulfilling their obligation through the scriptures, then either they should leave or you should leave. Okay? You should not sit there and listen to some, a bunch of foolishness. All right? That is, that is uh, a, a perversion, if you will, of what the scriptures actually say. I don't need to make anything up. You know, I don't have to reinterpret what the scriptures already say. Scripture interprets scripture. And so forth. So, I want to do that today with you. And this particular message I'm calling, Just Speak the Word. Just Speak the Word. Father, help us where we, where we need that help of understanding. Uh, teach us what we do not know. Show us what we cannot see. And make us what we are not yet. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who have, uh, uh, were not with us, Last week, while we were online, down in the, the lower caverns of uh, 5231 Valley Forge, <laughs> uh, we were preaching from a message uh, called, God's About to Do a New Thing, from Isaiah chapter 43. And, and, and the, the, the idea there is that Isaiah was, uh, was talking to a people, uh, as a prophet, the prophet of God, uh, about their disobedience and their impending captivity. They had not been following the Lord rightly, and sin could not go unpunished. You guys said, well, okay, I'm going to have enough of your foolishness, and now it's time for judgment. Let's be clear about this. As much as the God is the God of love, there's also judgment on the other side, so let's not forget that. Now, Isaiah did a great job as he went along of reminding these people, as I remind you today, of who God is. He said that God was their creator. God was their redeemer. He let them know that God considered them as his possession. You are mine, mine, M-I-N-E, the, the text says. They were reminded that through the waters and through the fire that God would be with them. And some of us need to be reminded as well for all the stuff that we go through. Hey, listen, God ain't left you hanging. We might feel like that, but that is not the case. Isaiah told them that they were precious, they were honored, and that they were loved. Huh? How about that? How about somebody, you wake up this morning, somebody called you and say, hey, you're precious, you're honored, and you're loved. My God, I think the pastor might make that call. I might put that on the loop and send that to you every, every morning. You're precious, you're honored, and you're loved. Man, what a great thing to, to be reminded of. Isaiah continues to tell them that you don't have to fear because God, the God that formed you, here it is, listen, the God that formed you is the same God that can sustain you. Huh? He shared with them that even in all of their wandering, not wondering, but wandering, that there was nothing that compared to the God that, was, that is God. He had to tell them, there are no other gods greater than this God. Uh, for all the statues and for all the figurines and for all the stuff that you wanted to, to make into an idol, guess what? No, 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 they can't do what this guy can do. But then the judgment came. God said, you know what? Isaiah said, to the, well, the Babylonians will have you as, your, as their captives for a time. Sin cannot go unpunished. But the great thing about God, I want you to hear it right today. The great thing is, it was the key to what Isaiah is saying to him, is not necessarily God's judgment, but God's desire for a continued relationship. Amen, that's true. Their, their restoration in the midst of their disobedience. 
And so God is still, listen, he's still interested in a relationship with you, even in spite of your unfaithfulness. Even in spite of your disobedience. Even in spite of sometimes you're going to fall short. Yeah. He likes to have you back in the fold with him. Yeah. He don't do it the way we do it. I, I done cut, I cut her off. <laughs> I, I, I done cut him off. Okay. Huh? Well, are y'all going to get back together? Oh, no, 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 no. They lied to me too many times. They did this too many times. They did that too many times. And I was just all about that. What if God treated us the way he treated us? What if he treated us the way he treated you? We've been cut off a long time ago. With no chance of restoration. No chance of reconciliation. No chance. No chance. But praise God, he don't do us the way we do. Isaiah, this is verse 18 of, of, four, of chapter 43, he says this to those folks. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, this is God. I do. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? So in the midst of all that was, there's something new coming, and that new thing is is the is it was Jesus, the deliverer, that was on the way, some six, seven hundred years prior, later. And so uh, he goes on even in, in chapter fifty-three, as I mentioned last time, of uh, reminding them that there was one coming. Who would, who would take away all that foolishness, who would deal with all of that sin, who would, who would help you in the midst of your challenge. The new thing is Jesus. And guess what? He was a new thing then, and he's a new thing now. Uh, some folks can't get past the old stuff and move toward the new thing. Uh, I mentioned it last week out of the civil rights movement. It's what Patty Lou Hamer said. She said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm wondering, who gets sick and tired of being sick and tired? The same old, same old. The same old frustrations. The same old roadblocks. The same old stuff. Just a different day. Just a different day. Same old stuff. I'm sick of that. And I wonder when people you know, do get sick of that for a change. You know, when you when you when you get a little older, you know, I was with some friends the other day and uh, at, at, at a, a, a little bar and grill where we got some food and and uh, and we got to a certain point in the night that and people, and people start putting their coats on. They start putting their coats on, and, and, and a couple others were like, "What's going on?" They said, "Well, we can't hang like we used to." <laughs> it's ten. It's ten thirty. And both women, they both on. They hit it home. They hit it to sleep. It's only 10.30. It's only 10 o'clock. It's time to go. Now back in the day, 1 o'clock, 1.30, 2.30, 3 o'clock, 4.30, shutting the place down. Oh, no, not anymore. Not anymore. Times have changed. Or better yet, I realized that, that there's not as much in that, in the, in the continuing to stay, as there used to be. This is not as fulfilling to me as it used to be. There's not as much in it for me as it used to be. As a matter of fact, it's, you know, after 10 30, what, what, what else is there? Particularly after midnight, it's time to go. He says, do not remember the former things. Let that stuff go. And let's move to the new thing. And so I'll, I'll ask you some questions about that new thing in a moment, but I do want to get to Luke 7 with, with a couple of quick examples, quick, quick passages to throw at you for homework. So why am I going to do this? Because as we consider our, our ministry and where we're headed, we've got we to remember something. The Christian faith is, is not about standing still. It's about moving forward. And what I'm going to challenge you to do today to do and, and next week is to think about how we move forward. How we can how we prepare for the new thing that EKO will be about. We've done two years. Now we're in year three. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. Hello? Amen. If we want a different result, we might just be happy with the way things are. But if we're not happy with the way things are, we want a different result. So that means we need to do something different. Right? Okay? And so, that new thing is just not for you. But the question is, that new thing also is in you. 
See, God ain't just trying to do a new thing for you. He's trying to do a new thing in you. So he can get the glory that he deserves. So he can get his, his purpose and his will accomplished. Not your will. Not just what you want. Not just to elevate you to the place where you want to be. Yes, if you if you build his kingdom, he'll help you build yours. He'll get, he'll give you that promotion. He'll, he'll, he'll give you that new salary. That you know, in that new venture. But your focus has to be on what pleases him first. Yes, sir. That's what folks get off track. That's where these folks got off track in Isaiah 43. They started, they took their eyes off God. And Isaiah had to come and remind them, no, 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 don't work like that. Don't work like that. See, this, this new thing, give me right now, requires preparation. This new thing re requires that we get ready. And I'm challenging you. We might need to change our perspective. We might need to change our heart. We might need to change our focus. We might need to change our devotion. Change our worship. Such is the case for them, and such is the case for us. Something has to change. See? The Christian faith is an active faith. It's not a sit back and wait faith. It's an active Why do I, how do I know that? Because Jesus told his disciples in, in Matthew 28, 18 and 19, or 19 and 20, to go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things which I've commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you even unto the end of the age. All of those those words are action words. Go, baptize, teach, not sit, wait, and wait. Go. Active faith. Paul even takes it a step further in uh, Philippians chapter three. Verses 12 through 14. He says, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but he says, I press on that I may lay hold of Christ Jesus who also laid hold of me. He laid hold of me and now I'm laying hold of him back. He says, brother, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach toward what's ahead. Huh? I reach toward what's ahead. I, I press toward the goal and the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Press on, EKO. Move forward. We're not sitting and resting on our spiritual behinds. There is work for the Lord to do, and we will do it. Amen. Our part, that is. Whatever our part is, as we identify, that's what we're going to do. So the idea is not to sit and wait, but to get up and go. Go where, Pastor? Go to the places where people need to hear and respond to the gospel message. Where is that? Well, we'll find it. <laughs> we'll be there. But because the simple truth is, statistically, most people don't come to faith in Christ in a church. No, I didn't. I, mean, I, I came to faith playing hooky from school. That's right, playing hooky. Had to turn the turn channel, and there was a 700 club, and a dark faced man with white hair, and Ben Kinslow giving the invitation to accept Jesus. And my heart was pricked, and before you knew it, I was crying and on my knees saying, Yes, she asked me, to put your hand on your television. I did it. And I prayed, I said, Lord Jesus, come into my, you know, go on and on and on. At home, playing hooky from school. God knows how to get you. He knows how to get you. Why, why would we want to do this? Because Paul once again says in 2 Corinthians 5, listen to this, 18 to 21. Now all things are of God, who did this, who reconciled us to himself in Christ Jesus, and has given us, listen to this, the ministry of reconciliation. The, the ministry of what it means to get right and back right with God. Not with us, but with God. Not to a church. That is that God in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing or counting their trespasses to them. And listen to this. Has committed to us, Paul told those believers, the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. That, that means sent out one, representative. 
We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making his words pleading through us, and we are for you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. So, if you consider yourself an ambassador, if you consider yourself a representative, then that means you are a sent out one. One who does not just sit and wait, but goes out to represent the one sending you out. And here's the newsflash. You don't go out with your message, you go out with the message of the one who sent you. That's what this is about. And he said, For he made him who knew no sin to be sent for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So I think you get the picture now. See, the, the question every believer must ask is how do we go about this ministry outreach? Who do we go to? How do we proceed? What should we be looking for as we go? Well, now we go to Luke chapter 7. This will help us. This will help us to get where we are trying to go. Just speak the word. Look at verse 1. We'll go down to verse 10 of Luke chapter 7. Praise the Lord. Now when he concluded all of his sayings in the hearing of the people, he, Jesus, entered Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, listen to that, when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one of whom he, he should do this was deserved. Mark that. For he loves our nation, and he has built a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, now he's sending another contingent to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and another, come, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. Then Jesus heard these. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. Jesus isn't always amazed by a lot of things, but this guy, he says he, he, he's mar he marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, not, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. That's among his people. And those who were sent, uh, return, uh, those who were sent, Returning to the house, found the servant well who had been sick. Those who were, they returned to the house, found the servant who had been sick, had, had been, the servant well who had been sick. So what is Dr. Luke telling us? Dr. Luke is, this has brought us into an interaction between Jesus and a Roman centurion, a Gentile. This, this military man a centurion means that he has at least 100 people under his command. Centurion. And Jesus has no obligation to this man. No, a Gentile. Matter of fact, he has not met the man. And so, because the man has first sent Jewish messengers first, because he figured since Jesus was a Jew, let me send people that he might affiliate with, people he might trust and believe. Let's send, let's, let me send them first. So he sent them. Why? Because he had a servant that was sick. Now that's interesting. Because most servants or slaves in this time weren't worth very much to the master. If they got sick, they, they were just like a piece of property. You just cast them out. But this, in this particular account, this servant, for whatever reason, was valued by this centurion. If he was one was sick, he or she would be cast off. But the centurion wanted to keep this person around for whatever reason. It does not say. But what the text does say is that this centurion had heard about Jesus. And what had he heard? Well, it's obvious that he's heard that Jesus has power and that Jesus has authority. Huh. 
Jesus has power. And Jesus has authority. And as we think about what we're going to be doing, and whoever we talk to, you know what our message is? Jesus has a power, and Jesus has authority. Authority to do what? To change your life. Huh? And how do you know that, Pastor? Because it happened to me. It happened to me. And so, this man of power, in a natural sense, he understood what authority was. Listen to what he says. He says, I'm a man under authority. He didn't say, I'm a man in authority. He says, I'm a man under authority. Huh? And when I say to folks, jump, they ask, how? They, don't say, they don't jump, they, they jump. When I say jump, they jump. When I say go, they go. When I say come, they come. That's the power I have. But you know what power he doesn't have? Huh? Do you know what power? For all the power he has over those 100 men, for all the power he has over the, the region that he's responsible for, you know what power he doesn't have? He doesn't have power to heal that servant. <laughs> he doesn't have that power. But he heard about Jesus. Huh? He heard about It reminds me of when Jesus is talking to the woman at the well in John 4. And he starts to talk, tell her all about herself. And she runs back to town. She says, I know a man. Huh? I know a man who told me everything about myself. And so this centurion, he sends all these folks to talk to Jesus. And what do they do? What do they do the same thing that people do today? Jesus should do this for me because I come to church. I give my tithe in my offer. They, they start laying down the man's credentials. They start trying to impress Jesus with what the man has done. He's deserving. Really? 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 You try to impress Jesus with, with your resume? You try to impress him with the fact that you showed up today? You ain't not doing him any favor. It's you who need what Jesus has to offer. Huh? And what does he need from you? Your obedience. Okay. Huh? Your passion for the lost. Your willingness to go to cross whatever line you need to cross to tell somebody that Jesus is still the one, the way, the truth, and the life. Why, why, what's happening here? Jesus has crossed a cultural line once again. That's one of the great things I love about it. There, there was nobody that Jesus would talk to. Whether you were lepers, whether you're a prostitute, but even the centurion. This is a Roman. He has no dealings with this man. As a matter of fact, these Romans were oppressive to the Jews. <coughs> For the most part, they had it under their thumb. That's why this man could take those, tell those Jews, hey, listen, go talk to him for me. And they went. And not only did they go, they, they lauded his accolades in front of Jesus to impress him. But Jesus, what, what's the lesson here for EKO. Well, Jesus does the thing that we need to do in 2024. He showed compassion. Mm -hmm. This man didn't deserve what they said he deserved. Matter of fact, he goes so far to tell you, tell, tell the say, I, I don't deserve for you to even come to my house. So he was, he was smart enough to realize that he didn't deserve what they said he deserved. And so as a Gentile, Jesus had no reason to respond to his request. No reason at all. And so, his flashy prediction didn't matter. His building of a synagogue didn't matter. What mattered was that Jesus had something that he wanted to do. And so Jesus responds. So don't, don't, don't get it twisted this morning. It ain't about your offering. It ain't about your presence. It, it's about your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. And so you can read this from the text. The centurion. What does he say once again? I'm not worthy to even come to you. What's, what's the new thing that, that, that God is doing in our lives? Well, we mentioned it before. It's a humility. The centurion shows a humility that we must always be willing to show. We can't get ourselves all fucked up and full of ourselves, thinking that, that we all have a bag of chips. We're, 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 
It's only the grace of God that has allowed us to be where we are today. It's only because of his mercy that we have an opportunity to say what we have to say. And so the humility is the new thing that we must seek. Because we're not doing the Lord any favors. The centurion, at best hopeful that Jesus will heal his servant, simply says, you know what? You don't even have to come to my house. Just speak the word. How did he know this? How did he know that there was power in the words of Jesus? Matter of fact, he didn't say, he didn't even say words. He said word. Speak the word. Say the word, Jesus. How does this man know? This isn't a man who was raised under, under Jewish teaching. This isn't a man who was, who was set down and put to the Torah. This isn't a man who, who got all the understanding of who Jesus was from the beginning to the point where he is. But somehow, 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 he's heard. And I'm here to tell you all, there, there's some folks that in our atmosphere, that, you know what they need? They need to hear. You can't save nobody, but you know what you can do? You can tell them. And there's folks just waiting to hear. How can I change my life? How can I move from a place in 2023 to 2024 with, with a new lease, a new sense, a new connectivity, a new sense of purpose? Is all they need to hear. We know a way. And like the woman in John 4, we know a man. <laughs> we know a man. So the simple truth here today is, and I have to tell people all the time, I'm not your savior, but I know one. I might be able to help you out, but I can't save you. But I know one. Huh? How does this man know that the word, a word from Jesus will make a difference? How does he know this? Does he think, as some had said, that Jesus is divine? That Jesus might just be God? Had he heard what Jesus has said, that when you see me, you see the Father? That I and the Father are one? Does he know anything about Genesis chapter 1? Where, where it says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Where God said, let the firmament be in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Where God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear? Does he know about this? That God brought everything into existence by what? A construction site? With cranes and construction workers? How did God bring everything into existence? When the spoken word And as the very son of God, this man has heard that all Jesus needs to do is to speak a word. Yeah. My Lord. Now, are you, are you convinced of the same? Are you convinced of the same? That all Jesus has to do in your situation is to speak a word? Impress Jesus. The centurion, in the, with the centurion's resume, Jesus was only impressed by this man's faith. How do I know that? Because he says it in verse 9. When Jesus heard these things, when he heard what the centurion had said about himself and about Jesus, he said he marveled. Jesus was amazed. This man ain't a Jew. This man don't hang out in the synagogue. This man's not in the temple. How does he know these things? Well, he knows. And he's willing to trust Jesus with the very life of his dear servant. Why? Because he believes he can make a difference. Amen. He says, Jesus marveled at him and turned around and said to the crowd, I say to you that I have not found great, such great faith, not even in Israel. Not among the people who should know better. Huh? 
I haven't found this much faith in the people who in church all the time. Who profess Jesus all the time. This man is doing what those folks ain't doing. He trusts me. He believes in me. He understands that all power and authority under heaven is in me. And all I gotta do is say it. So Jesus ain't worried about it. Even if you're trying to patronize him. <laughs> Come on, Jesus, help our help our friend out. Come on, help, help our friend out. He ain't worried about it. It's faith that impresses Jesus, not patronage. It's faith that impresses Jesus, not accolades. It's faith that impresses Jesus, not credentials. Not titles, not position, not prestige, not power. It's faith that impresses Jesus. So how's your faith in 2024? Is this a place where you need some help? Huh? Greater faith? Renewed faith? See, Jesus continues to cross lines, just like with the woman at the well. He, 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 he was a, a Jew talking to a Samaritan. But now he's a Jew helping a Gentile. And so, uh, like, unlike the Pharisees, who kind of pick and choose who they want to help, Jesus says, you know what? Everybody who needs help, I'll help. Huh? Everybody is fair game for what I offer. Because the challenge is, I have an opportunity to show compassion. I have an opportunity to, to see humility. I have an opportunity to experience the faith that they have. And anybody can be saved. So are you willing to cross the tracks? Are you willing to go to those folks who don't look like you? Who don't, who don't believe like you? That's our challenge. See, I say, I, we, we, we say it all the time. Uh, whosoever, whosoever will, let them come, right? Yeah, let them come. You can, you can come and be received. But the challenge is not that you can come as you are, but you shouldn't stay as you are. You can come as you are, but you shouldn't stay as you are. So we don't pick and choose who can hear the gospel. We are Christ's ambassadors. And we need to be ready to go, to preach, to baptize, and to teach. All action verbs. And so now, you've heard it. The Christian faith is an active faith, a faith where we must be moving forward toward the purpose and the will of God. And so as we move, let me just ask you, are you ready to ask Jesus to speak a word over your life, to speak a word over your faith, to speak a word over your family, to speak a word over this fellowship, to speak a word over your workplace, to speak a word over your neighborhood? To speak a word over your health, over your finances, over this year, and what's ahead. I don't know about you, but if I know that all he has to do is speak a word that will change everything and anything, that's what I'm going to ask him to do. Speak a word over each hell. Speak a word over each person who's here. Speak a word. Then we might be changed. That we might be different. That we might be able to fulfill your purpose in the earth. Speak a word, Lord. Speak it. Say it. Whatever it is. That we might be whole. That we might be healed. That we might be able. My Lord. Are you ready to hear from me? Are you ready to hear from me? Will you come with humility? The humility of the centurion? Will you come? Understanding that you're not deserving. You're not worthy. It's Jesus who makes you worthy. Will you come ready to receive his compassion? Ready to receive his mercy once again? Will you say, this, <coughs> Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. You don't even have to come in here, into this building. All I need you to do
Father, I just thank you today. I thank you for your word. I thank you for this account from Dr. Luke. I thank you for the detail, thank him for the detail that he provided. That lets us know that there are people out there who just need to hear about who Jesus is. One of power and one of authority. And these folks may not necessarily be folks raised in church. They might not be people who we would even be hanging out with most of the time. But they know what they need. And they know who can provide it. And so, Lord, get us out of the way with our pretense, with our, our, our credentials, and all the stuff we think makes a difference. It's faith that makes a difference. For the word tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so it's today, in this place, where I pray for all that we have moving forward, that we would be a people who trust God like the centurion. That we would be a people who understands his power and who understands his authority who understands that there is no name that is above the name of Jesus. That at his name, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess to the glory of God the Father. It's at that name. Hallelujah. And so today in this place, and those who will hear online, if you don't know this Jesus, if you don't know this one of power, if you haven't been changed by it, I would dare say today is the day. Would you say, Lord Jesus, speak a word over my life. Speak a word to my heart. Speak a word of salvation. Speak a word of redemption. Speak a word of grace. A word of mercy. A word of your love. Oh, Lord Jesus, just be the word that I might be changed. Thank you, Jesus. Be the word that changes my life from this point on. Speak a word of forgiveness. For indeed, I know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I know that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Hallelujah. And I know that you so love the world that you gave your only son, oh God, that whoever would believe in him should perish, should get the penalty of sin, but have everlasting life. So that for all I know, I'm at the moment of decision. And today, I say yes to your salvation, yes to your redemption, yes to your forgiveness and your love, yes to all of it, that I might be your disciple, that I might be that one who goes and baptizes and teaches and preaches and shares his good news with those who don't know. Hallelujah. Give me the faith of a centurion. Hallelujah. That I might be an effective witness for you. Lord, I know I'm not choosing you, but I know you've already chosen me. I'm receiving the gift that you've already provided. Your life provided. That I do it willingly. I do it conscientiously. I do it intentionally, for indeed I know the reward ultimately will be mine. Your life in me. Your spirit in me. And until you ask for your breath back, help me to serve you, Lord. Help me to give you everything I have. Help me to seek your kingdom and your righteousness, that all the things that I need will be added to me. Hallelujah. This is my hope as a first step toward you. Would you receive me, Lord? Would you take me in? 
make me your own. Adopt me, graft me into your family. Hallelujah. Today is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us know, friend, of your decision, of your willingness to take a step toward Christ as he's taken multiple steps toward the door of your heart. EKO Fellowship at gmail.com. That's how you let us know. EKO Fellowship at gmail.com. And for my brothers and sisters in Christ who, want to, who, who will be responsible for our ministry plan, responsible for a role in a kingdom building work in this from, that emanates from this place, I pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us as encouragement kingdom outreach to be willing to go your way. Speak to your servant. Thank you for the plan, but thank you also for faithfulness. People who are willing to come. People who are willing to give. People who are willing to serve. That your kingdom will come and your will will be done. Help us as we move forward with vision, with endurance, with strength, with humility, with compassion, with love. That we might fulfill all that you have for us, not just this year, but in the years to come. Touch each one now with the sound of my voice. Touch them physically, emotionally, mentally, socially, financially, whatever way you want. Have your way. Have your way today. Accomplish your purpose in all of our lives, individually and collectively. This is my prayer today in Jesus' name. And for those who would be with us but are not, we thank you for their faithfulness as well. Be with us today until we see them again. Protect their families, protect them in every possible way. And bring them back to us with a testimony of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Stand with these people.
that we might be your people. So thank you for all who have heard and who will hear later. Continue to be the God that we look to with love, with humility, with compassion, mercy and grace. We love you, we thank you, we praise you for your word, for this time of worship and praise. Go with us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 